the leader of our webinar today has been a great asset to us as technical director for the Caribbean Alliance for Sustainable Tourism, CAST. Danae Hines is the director of sustainability for OBMI, OBM International, which is a leading Caribbean-based architecture and master planning design firm. Focusing on sustainability in the hospitality and tourism sector, Dene provides support for design, operations, and planning through the company's Green Matters Center of Excellence. Without further ado, thank you, Dene, for joining us. Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much, Adriana. Thank you so much, Matt, for that lovely introduction. Um, I will try not to bore you all, but I will try to stick to the 30 minutes and maybe a bit less because I know we're all extremely busy. So I would like to welcome all of the attendees and thank you for your time and interest. And please do go ahead and sign up for Chief because I would love to see your smiling faces in person. Um, so there's always this question about why certify, yes certify, no don't certify, where does it come from? for not just hotels, but tour operators and the like. Um, we're seeing an increased um, interest throughout the region, um, as well as throughout the world globally. Um, when you look at items such as climate change and sea level rise, things such as um, the waste issue and our water considerations. Um, and even more recently, we're seeing the effects of climate change with the recent effects of the sargassum showing up on our seabeds and showing up on our beaches throughout our beautiful islands. Where is this coming from? Why is this happening? Well, it's a larger um, picture, not just about certifying and getting your hotel ready for sustainability, but it's also about thinking um, back on how we actually have led to these chain of events through our actions, through how we've been um, not as responsible as we should be and good stewards and citizens of um, what is our home, um, our earth. So. Um, the objectives today that we're going to go through um, for this presentation are what are the benefits of being environmentally certified? What do I get out of it? Uh, does it go beyond goodwill? Um, a lot of people assume that it's um, for those who just love the environment and that is it, but there are other facets to sustainability than just um, the environmental considerations. And will it improve business and is it worth the cost? The number one barrier to entry um, that we found in a few studies done about a year and a half ago through CARICOM was that the number one barrier to entry for certification was in fact cost. So um, we're going to seek to answer some of these questions here briefly but also more so in depth once we um, get to the conference in Puerto Rico um, that is chief during this session. So we have a ton of, our goal is basically to inform hotels and consumers about what it means to be environmentally certified. Um, for hotels, we want to let them know how it will benefit their business as well as their brand, um, along with the education portion of it um, in terms of the cost associated with any green practices and your potential return on investment. Um, we also want to have educated consumers who ask questions and who are actively engaged in your hotel or your tourism enterprise's green practices. Because with the trend in a lot of these certifications, we're seeing the ownership go more to the customer um, in terms of what it is they see. And they are actually the, um, they're working alongside the accredited auditors to kind of police you know, our tourism enterprises to say, are we really doing what we claim we're doing? Is it not just a label? So we want them to not only enjoy the benefits of green living while on vacation, but when they return home, we want them to hopefully take what they're seeing at your establishment, if you are certified or if you do have some form of a um, sustainability plan within your uh, tourism enterprise that they're seeing it in your everyday activities and they're able, you're able to showcase to them what it means to be a steward um, of the environment as well as um, be economically viable and, and socially aware. So when we look at the consumer side, let's just see what are the, some of the questions that they ask. Well, they want to know, will green, will green practices impact my stay? Do I have to uh, understand, do I have to compromise comfort? And, and service and quality for um, being more environmentally friendly. When you're going on this path to becoming certified, these are the things that you know, you're asked and that you ask yourself. You want to make sure that, of course, your guest, the first person who is going to be your main asset, um, is well aware and that it doesn't impact their state. So 
you know, hopefully certified hotels will vocalize um, all of their projects and their programs that they're seeing, what they're implementing, um, so that you, the consumer, can understand exactly what it is um, that they're looking at. And if hotels are working on energy savings, how is it done? How is the guest comfort going to be a factor? These are some of the things that hoteliers and tourism enterprises are going to be concerned with. So we ask these consumers these questions so that we can understand how we can answer them so you can have the benefit in knowing when you navigate through your various certification system or standard some of the things to have in the back of your mind and that we know are some of the things that you're also asking yourself. Um, guest comfort is going to be um, on various locations and you know the number one priority. So you want to make sure that when you're looking at um, what what certification or standard you're, you're considering, that they have a social aspect, that they include the guests within their standard, that it is something that's a top priority for you in terms of you know, a tourism enterprise knowing what it is that you're like that you would like to get out of your certification. Um, will it cost? Do you know hotels want to understand? Is it gonna cost? I mean, is it gonna cost more per night to stay at um, at a green hotel? These are things that consumers want to know. They they have these questions. Is it? Am I gonna be taxed extra because of some of these green practices that may or may not be in place? Um, you know, having your guests come on board with you in your environmentally um, in your environmental program makes it somewhat more successful. Actually, um, for instance, Starwood they provide an amazing rewards program for their guests who opt to go about three days or more, um, up to three days with limited cleaning. Um, so if you hang a card out on your door, I think probably before say, 3 a.m. the night before, um, that says, yes, I want to participate in this, you, the guests, are, you know, you, the hotel, are giving the guests that option. You're not forcing it on them. You're giving them that option, but you're also giving them an incentive to take part and to be a part of what it is that you're doing within your hotel. What do the guests get from that? Well, um, Starwood has various levels. Um, they may decide that they'll um, put extra points towards your account. Um, there may be a gift voucher um, that you can redeem during your current state or your next day to encourage you, your consumers to come back again and to visit your hotel again. So there are a lot of ways that you can involve the guests without being um, without being too pushy, <laughs> I guess is the best way to say it. Um, and then that way your guests are actually more involved and it, it reduces you know, the fact that it will not cost more for your guests to stay unless you have a, a, a special room that you're planning on putting together that say um, is eco-certified or eco-sensitive, hyperallergenic, and has all of those um, things that we're looking at for health reasons, then that might be a different story. Um, so to answer the question, from the consumer, will it impact your stay? We hope that it won't because now, um, nowadays when you're looking at the way in which a lot of these these companies do their sustainability practices, a lot of it is, is back of the house and some of it is forward facing for the social gain of the customer. Will it cost more? Not, not so much per se for the customer. Another question consumers have all the time are um, what am I getting besides the knowledge that hotel is environmentally friendly? Environmentally friendly. So what's in it for me? Um, obviously, the peace of mind that you have little or no impact to local environments and communities is a plus. Um, we're seeing that our travelers are very much more well aware. You're seeing that increase in volunteerism. You're seeing an increase in cultural considerations. You're seeing an increase in the traveler wanting to get ingrained and get involved in the cultural aspect and to really care and be concerned about the places that they're visiting and understand their own impact. Um, so with this, um, you know, guests are actually funneling more money to local economies and boosting them. So it's becoming um, something that's not just um, a fad. It's something where guests actually really do care and they want to get involved. They want to know that their money is being spent in, 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 great, in great ways throughout your um, hotel or within the community that you surround. So many environmentally certified hotels host a number of exciting activities that are very involved within the community. So it comes along with preserving their local habitat and their culture because it's not just the hotel that the consumer is staying in, it's the surrounding community and hopefully the rest of the island. So you'll be able to immerse your, so, you know, when you're looking at your certification and your standards, you want to make sure that they also have a social and community aspect to them because you want to immerse, you want to allow your guests to immerse themselves in the location and connect with the area instead of just the resort. Um, nature hikes, diving, cultural activities, other outdoor adventures um, are, you know, they're more likely to 
to, to do these things with partner tourism enterprises that you, the hotelier, and the tourism enterprise can work together with so that that way you can get more bang, they can get more bang for their buck and they can really be a part of something special. It's not just about, you know, changing the towels or changing the linens. It becomes an actual part of their stay and becomes something that they're able to experience and see outside of just the, you know, standard certification. And then, you know, consumers also ask, how do I know which hotels are more sustainable than others? Where do I find this information? Who rates it? Well, respective certification sites and newsletters have, you know, respective certifications and sites have their newsletters. You have Green Hotelier, you have TripAdvisor, you have Eco Rooms and Eco Suites. You have, I mean, you can search myriad of these things and different um, travel, uh, different travel sites rate your hotels nowadays. So, you know, if you're a member or if, you, or if you're not looking at a travel site, you want to understand which of the um, certifications are actually, you know, better than others, I would say all certifications um, are on one even keel. And some may have different facets to others. But it really depends on the size of your property, the location of your property, what are your goals, what are you trying to achieve. Lining that certification up with your own standard operating procedures and your own goals for yourself as a tourism enterprise is always key. Navigating that process is something that us at CAF seek to do for you if you have those questions to answer them. Um, you can always get information. Sign up to some of these certifications. Green Globe has weekly newsletters. Green Key has monthly. Earthcheck has monthly. Um, you know, TripAdvisor is always putting out information. Green Hotelier has amazing articles. Um, see, um, the Green Key Eco Rating Program has, you know, their standards available for you to peruse. Sign up for some of these newsletters and understand how they're marketing their customers and understand what they may have in store for you. Um, many hotel sites, including Expedia and TripAdvisor, have a section on their pages where you can search for these specific types of accommodation. Um, ResponsibleTravel.org. Um, you can always do some research and find out what's perfect for you know your hotel, and consumers can also do the same thing um, to find out what's great for their family if they want to understand exactly what's going on. So that's a bit from the consumer side, and somewhat touching also on the hospice, on the tourism enterprise side. But let's get into a few questions that hoteliers may ask. Um, for instance, are more people going to be interested in my hotel if I am certified? Well, the answer to that question is maybe they will. <laughs> Consumers are getting smart. They're conscious. They know about what they're buying. They are very considerate in terms of what they choose to spend their money on. And when it comes to the green movement, um, climate change, uh, you're seeing a lot more um, interest in this sector, not just from the general public, but also from the traveling person as well. Um, according to the World, Tra World Tourism Organization, ecotourism is actually the fastest growing industry in the tourism industry, uh, about 5% worldwide. So we're looking at, you know, ecotourism is here to stay. It's going to evolve. It's going to take on different forms from sustainability to resiliency to guarding yourselves to being hurricane and disaster preparedness, to making sure that everything else around you is, is, is sustainable in a sense, to the agribusiness, agritourism, all those different things and those things within the tourism value chain are going to start getting, um, you know, they're going to start becoming a part of what sustainability is and what certifications will ultimately start to look at. And for a consumer, they're going to be saying, you know what, I want to stay here, I want to get involved, because we're seeing a trend in the way in which people are traveling. They're traveling for culture, they're traveling for unique experiences. And having an environmental certification can actually put you out at the forefront of the minds of those who are looking specifically for that particular type of destination, or that particular type of um, experience. So I believe in the short form that yes, I think people are going to be more interested in your hotel because it is environmentally certified. They're going to look at it and they're going to say, oh, well, this person has actually gone the extra mile to actually do something that's not required, but is something that they're willing to do. It's something that they care about and they're conscious of their efforts and their impacts. Having certifications can definitely help you enhance your brand and your reputation. You can be more connected on your landing page, search. Um, where you're, when you're doing searches. And um, a lot of these certification companies have excellent marketing schemes. 
they're always trying to put their um, members out in the forefront. They're recommending them for awards. They're recommending them for, you know, tourism, world tourism and travel awards, responsible travel awards. They're getting these awards based on their certification and their commitment to not only just the environment, but their social awareness, their, the fact that they are saving money which takes us now into what are the costs associated when and when will I start benefiting from green practices. Well, there are several ways for you to do that, and it comes in various forms. It all depends on what you hold near and dear and what your priorities may or may not be. Um, five, ways, five ways to get green is obviously focusing on your building, maybe considering some renewable energy, looking at education, but really investing in, in, in your people and in your staff because they're your number one resource and they're generally your highest cost outside of your um, outside of your operating costs. So obviously understanding that retrofitting can be expensive, especially for smaller hotels, there are initial costs that you could do to you know save money and see return on your investment. Um, certification fees and membership fees range anywhere from about four hundred US dollars all the way to about five thousand US dollars plus an audit fee at an average of, say, $1,700 US dollars, depending on the size and location. So the EPA estimates that for up to every 10% reduction in energy or reduction that you see, it's equivalent to raising each room rate by about $1.35. So that obviously adds up. So are there costs associated? Yes. When will you start benefiting from the green practices? It really depends on how you phase it out. If you look at first your low-hanging fruit, first and foremost, investing in your people and your resources because behavioral change has, a, um, has been shown to create or to, to allow you to receive 50% or more in your savings in terms of your operations just from behavioral changes, yes you will start benefiting from green practices when you have a team that is well-educated and that is willing to put in the work and then to get it done. There are a lot of amazing schemes out there now where you have some hotel association matching you, matching your dollars for um, energy retrofits. You have um, the Chinak program on certain islands that will come in and do your ho energy hotel audit. You can understand exactly what you need to change and how you can go about changing that. Nowadays, you have those ESO models. You're seeing now that a lot of the um, providers and the suppliers of these retrofits and HVAC, um, boiler systems, lighting, they come as a financing model. So they're very aware of the fact that there needs to be some form of assistance when they're going in to do these retrofits in these hotels. So yes, there is there is cost associated with it, but you can benefit, and some of that cost can be um, taken up by some of these amazing um, new vendors that are coming in, and they have financing models alongside their retrofit plans as well. So that's kind of um, it in a nutshell. I know I only took about 20 minutes, but I never like to bore anyone. It is a teaser, as you, as you know. Um, and we're hoping that we can delve more into the conversation as we get to cheap and actually go down, um, you know, line item by line item to understand what are the things that are really um, on the minds and hearts of our hoteliers and how can we connect that to matching with the consumer demand and the consumer expectation. Um, so with that, um, I will conclude at 20 minutes and allow for an additional um, 15 or 10 minutes of questions. If there are any, um, I welcome them. Um, again, I thank you for your attention. Never want to give too much away. Um, we definitely want to see you there at Chief. And um, I'll open the floor up. Wonderful. Well, we do have some questions. Thank you so much, Danae. One question that we have here is that we know that I think it's TripAdvisor, right, that they have a green leaders program. Um, and yes. it's, they basically give you a little green leaf on your listing um, with the, with, within your listing in TripAdvisor and it allows people to review your, the sustainability aspect of your hotel as well as the actual service and all of that. And have you heard anything of that really affecting the actual reviews online when people have that little leaf uh, onto their TripAdvisor listing? It comes in many forms. Um, basically, with TripAdvisor and the Greenleaf, it has um, gotten a lot of great attention here in the United States. I know they have released it for the Caribbean market. It's been mm -hmm. about, about almost about a year now, I would say, probably about eight months. And I've seen and noticed um, a, 
a lot of people, um, a lot of hoteliers who have actually registered for it, and um, they are seeing positive remarks, and they are getting a bit more traffic from that green lease. Um, another thing to note is that um, uh, some of the um, clients that I've worked with um, who actually are certified um, under an environmental certification have actually recently been, you know, taken into the TripAdvisor Hall of Fame. And oh. they are green leaders as well, and they have um, done very well, and I commend them um, for the work that they are doing. And they said, you know, hands down, Danae, it was, you know, also attributed to the fact that we are, in fact, you know, doing well in our in our um, environmental program that we have here. It's, it's an added bonus and it's an added plus. So uh -huh. um, people are taking note, and TripAdvisor has seen a, a lot of success, definitely here in the U.S., and, and slowly but surely coming for the Caribbean market as well with that green leaf. It's, it's allowing consumers to actually see it at a bird's eye view a lot faster than they would if um, they waited until they got to the actual hotel. Mm -hmm. And what's interesting to me, what's really interesting about the TripAdvisor green leaf program is that it 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 seems to have been traveler generated. It was a demand generated by the the public to know whether a hotel is certified is is green or not. So that means that that's a deciding factor to a large portion of the of the of the traveling public. Another question that was sent over here was as far as grants, uh, wanting to know if there's anything, any grants or programs. Uh, that can offset the cost of becoming more environmental? Okay, well, in terms of grants and programs, there's a lot of um, grants currently um, for energy efficiency and um, energy independence. That is obviously one of our main costs throughout the region, and there are a lot of aid programs that are currently in place throughout the region um, that are working on just that. Um, I mentioned the CHANAC program earlier. There's also some oncoming grants um, that may that may trickle into the region shortly but surely from alternative funding sources um, to assist with um, energy retrofits and the like. Um, I would say also get in contact with your local hotel and tourism association. Um, some um, in the past have done matching grants for lighting retrofits. Um, there are also some uh, amazing vendors out there throughout the Caribbean and also some that are based in the U.S. that do have, as I mentioned earlier, financing mechanisms that are tied to their retrofits. Um, it's, it's it's definitely based on the size of your hotel, um, but I will say um, in the short term, definitely see if you qualify for an act. Um, look at, um, they are coming out with a website, so they'll have amazing tools there for you soon that you can kind of pick up on your own, but also check with your local hotel and tourism association. But from a World Bank or a larger bank view or a global bank view, um, aid in the form of grants and, and grant funding through programs similar to Shanac um, are definitely online and coming um, already within the region and coming online soon as well. Okay. Uh, Ted has a question. Within LEED certification in the United States, there are a, vari a variety of levels of commitment to reach silver, bronze, or gold certification by sourcing energy from renewable resources. Within the pro ecotourism certification and the entity serving this market, what are the certification requirements for sourcing energy from green sources, if any? Okay, well, when it comes to, are you asking specific to LEED or just in general? Um, I believe it's in particular within LEED. Mm -hmm. Okay, in particular within LEED, well, LEED has um, a requirement that your renewable energy sources, um, unfortunately, waste to energy does not qualify as a renewable energy source for, or as a form of that. Um, you, they, they look at, obviously, um, solar panels. They, um, they look at PV. It really depends on the situation and the market. Some of them will consider geothermal, um, and they also will um, consider wind as well. Um, wave technology is slowly but surely coming up. Um, it's not something that's definitely mandated within um, the LEAF framework, but um, it definitely will fall into a scope, and it really also depends on, um, again, your location, um, because they do have regional-based credits, and they will um, evaluate your renewable energy source based on where you are located and how you're able to 
to get that energy. Um, but it's, your, it's from your basic, your basic PV, um, solar, um, they will allow for wind, they will allow for um, geothermal. Okay, Ted just responded here, said it, could he meant it in general, I'm sorry, I misunderstood. Oh, he said okay. that um, across certification entities, not just LEED. Mm -hmm. Okay, well across all certifications, one of the things that I will say that's great about some of the other certifications is that they don't require, they don't have a specific mandate of what renewable energy source you use. They require that you can verify that it is a renewable energy source and they give you an option of what you, what you can use. They just want to see that your power is being offset by, some, by something that is off the grid. So for them, um, they may welcome, say, um, a waste to energy or an incineration type of operation. Um, they as whereas lead will not um, or may not dependent. Um, so if you have geothermal, if you have PV solar, if you have um, wind, if you have wave technology, all of those sources are are welcome within the certification scheme. They don't have a specific requirement or request of what where your renewable energy source comes from, just that it can be verified and certified by a third party entity that it is in fact a renewable energy source. Okay. Next question here is, is there a simple way in which we can educate our employees to be green? Are you able to provide names of educational programs that they can take home? Yes, of course. Um, well, first of all, we do have our sustainability webinar series that CAST is putting on. Um, mm -hmm. But outside of that, we are able to um, speak directly with your hotel, understand your, your needs, and try to either A, tailor or customize something that's unique to your own hotel or your brand, or B, we can look within the current systems that are in place and kind of tailor that so that that is something that can be say, a learning module that they take home, say, once a week, or it's just you know continuing the education in the form of a PowerPoint, or it can be face-to-face -face interaction, um, which I find is always the best thing. But I think baby steps are always best, giving them, say, um, a goal to reach, one, you know, one goal per week or one new new um, lesson per day is always easiest. Repetition is key, and making sure that it's not just a top-down approach, but a bottom-up approach. Your employees need to be willing and understand that this not only benefits, you know, the company themselves, but that it benefits them as well. And it's able, it's something that they can also take home to help in their own their own practices. When you're able to relate to that employee or your staff members that this is not just something that we do here within our hotel, but it's something that you should be doing within your own lifestyles to help mm -hmm. reduce your own um, your own energy bills or your own um, cost savings within your within your home and in your surrounding community, they take ownership of it. They understand it. And when you give them a project or you give them something that's them that they can own and they can research themselves, they get excited about it and they tend to find amazing sources that maybe you or I may not even consider because they're really taking it and putting and ingraining it into their standard operating procedure. So integrating your green practices into your standard operating procedures tends to be a very good way to kind of make it mainstream versus it being an add-on to the current services that they already do. So showing them and letting them know, listen, we're going to clean in this type of way. I know it's slightly different from what you're used to, but this is not just increasing um, your skill set and diversifying you. It's also helping us to save money as well as increase um, our effectiveness within this program. So mm -hmm. there are definitely plenty of things that can be done um, in a myriad of ways, and CAS is always here as a resource to help. Um, another thing that I will say is that some certifications do come with training modules as well. Um, they are, um, they do tend to be either A, baked into the cost of certification, or B, they may be at an extra fee, but explore that. You know, when you look at the certification, see if they have training. Nowadays, there are training modules that come with um, the standards and the certifications. It's not just a list of items that you need to fulfill. So they are understanding that the human element and behavioral changes is definitely something that needs to be paid attention to and um, can really make or break your environmental program. So it's allowing them to take ownership of, the, of it as well as seeing that it also comes from above, that they're managers and that it comes from the upper level also of, the, of, man, of hotel management, that they're embracing it as well as, as, well as every, that everyone in the organization is taking part. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. It may it may resonate with some, it may not resonate with others, but that's okay. As long as you have your champions and and, and everyone's aware, um, at least aware, then then we know we're 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 doing something. 
does it help to, for example, like you said, you're going to have your champions, people that really take to it, like a duck to water. Would it be beneficial for the hotel from the HR perspective to kind of highlight them and say, you know, thank you for being our green champion or creating some kind of benefit to those that do embrace the program, kind of make them a role model? Incentives are always great. Um, that's just us as, as, as people, as human nature. Um, we always want to, you know, like the consumer question, what's in it for me? Um, mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's the truth. And making sure that um, your employees or your staff members or your team or however you want, your family, however you want to target them or, or, or um, bring them into your organization is well aware and that they receive the, the praise and the, um, and your gratefulness for them kind of taking that step is always very encouraging. Um, rather it be in the form of, you know, um, having a, a dinner for two as an incentive for, you know, the, the champion of, say, um, each department and mm -hmm. understanding, you know, who's actually in what department doing better to save more. Um, it could be something slight or it can just be, you know, a recognition. I mean, mm -hmm. some people, a lot of hotels actually have it within their incentive programs where you may have employee of the month, employee of the week, employee of the quarter. You have, you know, green leader of the quarter, green leader mm -hmm. of the week, green person of the month. So that way, even if it's someone who's not um, in a management role or in um, a senior role, someone who's throughout the, the, the value chain of your enterprise can still be recognized for their, um, their efforts in, in, in moving forward that green program in their respective area. Great. And we have one more question. Um, will you be able to share the top five ways small hotels in particular can implement changes in a simple way to be greener? Um, top five ways off the top of my head. <laughs> Um, yeah, I would for small first, hotels in particular. For small hotels in particular. I would say first and foremost, um, you have to get, um, you have to get, I would say identify your champion first. It's always mm -hmm. good to identify the people who have a, a general passion about it because they're always willing to kind of lead the charge. You want someone who's going to be influential and who's going to be committed to the cause. I would say that's number one. Number two, I would say make short-term goals. I would say look at the schemes or the standards that are already available that you can see their standards. And I would say match that up with your top, you know, with your top, you know, five priorities for your business, rather that be, you know, growing your, your brand, rather that be increasing your social media presence, rather that be, um, you know, up, obviously upping your um, your visibility and, and making sure that you can have um, higher um, higher occupancy, you know, I would say mat look at those standards and match them to your top five priority goals. That would be number two, is finding and identifying your standards. Number three would be to start small, slowly but surely implementing in baby steps. I would look at it and say, you know, from a whole perspective, let's just focus on maybe say one department in short and, you know, break it down. That would be my first step. Break it down and see where you find um, your most um, cumbersome or, or rather be your cumbersome or your low-hanging fruit. Um, it's really up to you. Some people want to be um, daring and some people want to be less daring. So I would say, you know, break it down and see of those priorities what's the first step that you can do. Um, number four would be to um, go ahead and start tag teaming it. You know, when you, after you identify your champion, after you look at your standards, after you break down where you want to start implementing first, I would say, you know, pinpoint um, the area that you want to work in and then also have, have, have a goal, set that goal, and make sure that um, there's someone to check that goal to see if you met it and give yourself you know, a reasonable time frame. Don't don't push yourself to get it done in say a week. Let's say maybe a month. You know, what is it that they say it takes? Um, I think two weeks to form a habit, mm -hmm. or um, seven days, or something of the sort. So give yourself a month and then see where you are. And then, you know, fifth, of course, you go back and you celebrate that small achievement and you move forward with the second one. So identify um, your champion, find your standards, break it down based on your own um, your own uh, goals that you have for your business. Um, be you know have have that plan in place when you implement to make sure that you have um, a time frame and you budget yourself accordingly, and then you celebrate it. 
you know, you always want to reiterate and celebrate the small wins and the and the and the small achievements because those help you to build on on larger wins and bigger achievements. Right. There are no small wins. It's all a win. <laughs> <laughs> it's all a win. <laughs> it's all a win. Okay. Well, you know what? We're gonna keep this webinar then short and sweet. Thank you so much, Danae, for for helping us out and and putting all of this wonderful information out there for everyone. As I said at the beginning of the webinar, all of this content as well as the recording of this webinar will be available. Oh, there's one more question. Do you want to take one more? Sure. Okay. Sorry, this lady jumped in a little bit late, but that's all right. Let's get take one more question. Um, let's see. How did the resort go about getting green certified? Uh, uh, this is... Oh, I'm sorry, I'm just trying to read at the same time. Um, okay, I guess she just wanted no, more specific information again about small ho hotels as far as the process of paperwork wise I'm gathering is on, on getting um, paperwork. Certified. Yeah, certifications do require a lot of paperwork. Um, <laughs> I'm not going. I'm not going to to sugarcoat it. Um, they do. Um, there is an immense amount of um, paperwork that you need to get um, in place. So I would definitely make sure that you, when you go into a certification, you have to document everything. Okay, and when you do a certification, you want to also make sure that there's some form of a there's some form of a third party auditor that's attached to that certification because it just it just strengthens the certification first and foremost. Okay, because you want to make sure that you're being credible and that it makes sense that it's not just okay a first party or a second party. A third party is ideal. So within that scheme, that auditor may have um, some templates or some um, items that they may be willing to share with you to help you to help reduce the amount of paperwork that you're going to need to put in place. Um, for small hotels, I know it is cumbersome trying, trying to find the human resources to have it done. Generally, there tends to be um, you know, either the reservations manager or the HR manager or the engineer who's doing the most, and then they also have to fill out all this paperwork. Um, back to, you know, Number three, when I said break it down, break it down and, and, and delegate and assign tasks to various personnel who are responsible for those specific tasks within that standard, within that criteria. So that that way it doesn't all become on one person, but everyone can kind of, you know, do their own part to assist in getting the paperwork ready and available. A lot of the times, the paperwork tends to be um, something that you already need, that you may already have. It may just be an MSDS sheet for specific chemicals that you already have that you must have by law and you didn't realize you needed it for this particular certification. So a lot of it tends to be um, repetitive sometimes um, and some of it can also be, um, can be, can be met by some of the standard operating procedures that you already have. So I would, again, going back to number two, looking at your standards and looking at your goals and your operating procedures, see where you have synergy, see where things line up where, you know, say your own internal purchasing policy could also double as your environmental purchasing policy. You may just need to add a few more things or talk with your purchasing manager or with, you know, some of your vendors to see what, what opportunities are there. Um, hiring a consultant is always um, a great a great thing to do. Um, obviously, sometimes you may not always have um, the funds for that. But if you can hire a consultant, well, you know what? If you're a member of CHCA and you're a member of CAF, that's what we're here for, to assist you and to help you in those instances where we can, um, hopefully at um, a lower cost to you and also to be more of a resource to you. So reach out and see um, what we have available. Um, always, 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 there's always some amazing, young, beautiful, um, person who is in school or needs to assist, there's no harm in finding yourself an intern. I had one this mm -hmm. summer and it was a joy, a joy <laughs> for me. <laughs> okay, so you know, utilize those resources. It's a great way to get up into the community and find someone who's looking to kind of um, get into the hospitality sector or who's involved in environmental studies. Um, you know, you're not only helping them to further their education, but you're assisting yourself in the workload, and you're also giving back into the community. And you, who knows, they may become a stellar person, and then you work out wonderfully, 
and there you go. You don't even have to advertise for your next job because this person's mm -hmm. here already. So you save yourself costs in HR. So mm -hmm. it can be a marauder way, but cash is here to assist. The consultant way is also another way. Looking within your own standard operating procedures, um, if you don't have them, now's the time to get them started and to include the environmental considerations into this so you don't have to double the paperwork. Or find yourself an intern. There are plenty of them, I'm sure, around within the mm -hmm. region who are willing to get more involved. Um, every young person who I meet or see is in some way, shape, or form tied to sustainability. Um, in some way, even in you know a business degree or an architecture degree or a tourism and hospitality degree or you know a, a journalism degree, everyone is focused on you know sustainability in some way, shape, or form. So you're finding that the schools are educating um, personnel with the thought of sustainability in mind throughout these various degree programs. So those are my suggestions for small mm -hmm. And you can also go to Chiefs and go to the, to the Go Green track and learn all of these wonderful things in detail and get tons more resources and all of these wonderful, uh, all this wonderful information from other leaders like Benet. So thank you. So I, now we are at the end. Now we're not joking around. Now we really are at the end of the webinar. <laughs> no kidding. Uh, thank you so much again, Danae. Thank you, everyone, for attending. As I said at the beginning of the, of the webinar, the video recording of this session will be available and will be emailed to each and every one of you at the end, within 48 hours and will also be available on our website, which is www.caribbeanhotelandtourism.com. There's going to be a button on our homepage that's called Learning Tools, CHTA Learning Tools, and there you will see Denise's lovely face and you will be right next to it, you will see the presentation available for download. Thank you again. I hope everybody has a wonderful day. And thank you for coming. Thank you, Denise. Thank you. Thank you.